Hello and welcome back to another Mr. Farney Earth Science video here as part of our volcano unit. We've reached the end, the very final section in which we're going to discuss different types of intrusive activities that are associated with volcanism underground. We've spent some time speaking about some surface features like ash cloud, lava flow, different types of magma, different types of volcanoes, what they're comprised of. This time we're gonna go a little bit more underground to see different pieces of evidence volcanologists and geologists can use to kind of glean what the tectonic activity in that area was in the past. So all of these different features are going to be intrusive or underground is another way of going about and describing that. So the large majority of Earth's volcanism, it takes place below the Earth's surface. You and I, we see what happens when the volcano erupts, the ash and gas come out of the cloud, lava coming down the mountainside, pyroclastic flows, some projectile rocks, all that stuff. Deep inside the earth was where we get the large majority of different types of features forming. And we call these different features plutons, as in like plutonic. All of these features result from underground volcanism. Many of them, after that volcanism stops, they begin to cool down and then they become solidified igneous rock. So solidified, solidified magma structures that we can see deep underground. And they vary in sizes. They can be very small, very narrow, or very large and very wide. Geologists like these because it helps to provide them, like I said, with evidence of past volcanism, what was going on in the past. So it's a really important tool to kind of help these scientists look in the past to see what was going on. The first structure, let's start with the biggest. It's called a batholith, say batholith, okay? These are irregularly shaped intrusions of coarse-grained igneous material, igneous rocks that are very coarse-grained. It's very easy to see the different types of minerals that are found in these rocks. If I reach over here real quick, and I grab this, this piece of granite, you see how you can easily tell the different specks and things like that that exist on the rock? While we haven't spoken about the specific minerals that are in these rocks yet, you can easily see, yeah, I can see that there are different minerals in there. They're large, they're coarse grained. It's very easy to tell what's going on in these types of rocks. And that's what these bath lifts are made out of. Large, massive areas that almost resemble mountains after a certain point, they're that big. They're massive in size. These were parts of the original magma chamber for the volcanic activity in these areas. If you look on the map that's associated on the slide, you can see these big red areas up there in Washington, Idaho, parts of Nevada, mostly in California there. All of these are batholiths, And you can tell that even though there are four of them here, none of the four are equal in kind of shape or orientation here. The pictures below are what batholiths look like after they've cooled and then because of some you know, tectonic motion, they were uplifted from deep below the Earth's surface. The surroundings were eroded away. And that leaves us with these really fantastic looking massive rock structures at the surface here. So these uplifted areas of igneous rock, these were once part of massive magma chambers deep under the Earth's surface. So batholith, massive irregularly shaped intrusions. Similar to a batholith, is a stock, you know, they're just smaller in size. Both stocks and batholiths, they cross cut older rock layers. On the left here, like we saw in the previous slide with the batholiths, this is a stock. It's a much more narrow feature. It's very tall, almost looks like a mountain, but this again was formed underground. And then over time it was either uplifted and or the surrounding area began eroding away. Looking at this picture, this kind of graphic here, this is a great graphic picture to show many of the different features that we're talking about today. Here's that batholith, the huge feature right there that was part of the original magma chamber. And it feeds so many of the different features that we talk about. Some of that magma may have worked its way up to the volcano. Some of that magma may have tried to work its way up. And we'll talk about dikes, sills, and lacoliths in a second. Just know that batholith, it's part of the original magma chamber. Compare that to the stock, you know, again, it's similar in like height size as a batholith, but it's much more narrow. So both stocks and batholiths, they're cutting across rock layers. Both of them were part of that ancient magma chamber. Stock is just smaller than the batholith. Next, kind of sounds familiar, a lacolith. 
This is what happens when magma forms in parallel rock layers. And then the surrounding area kind of bows upward to create a dome. On this image, it's in the middle here. We have the magma down here, probably, you know, part of the original magma chamber, we can just kind of say. Some of that magma begins working its way up to the surface, and it hits some point where that magma is no longer able to kind of break through that rock material. Maybe, you know, that rock is too strong, that magma is just not able to find a weak point to break through. So what happens is that magma begins collecting in one of the layers or between one of two of the layers, and it starts creating this dome shape right here. And as you can see, looking at this picture, the layers of rocks signified by this brown line, this pinkish line, and then again, a brown line on top of that, it begins to bow or dome to kind of match the shape of the lacolith there. So again, this form is when magma tries to work its way up to the surface, it hits a point in rock in which it's unable to find a fracturable zone to kind of break through and keep working its way to the surface. That magma collects, it begins to dome up, giving us this feature that we call a lacolith. The next two, they're called dikes and sills. Both of these do the same thing. The orientation is just, you know, one's vertical and one's horizontal. Both of them are intrusions that cut through rock material, the relatively thin. So a dike, the first one here, pictured on the right, we have some sort of rock right here that's kind of dark color. And the dike is this lighter gray rock that you can see it looks like it's cutting straight through that parent material that's right behind it. So right here, this is that igneous intrusion, that dike cutting right through the other rock material in a vertical section. To me, that shows that this rock, it was there, it was existing in that material. And then at some point, magma began bubbling up underneath and it slowly cut its way all the way through that rock material. That's a dike. A sill, it's the same thing, but instead of going vertical, it goes in a parallel motion. So on this picture here, you can see that there's that one like stripe band cutting parallel through that rock material. That's the sill. It's intruding parallel to a rock layer. And you can see that there's not a lot of distortion going on. The material above it looks the same. The material below it looks the same. The only real difference that you could tell is that it's a much darker color kind of cutting through that parent material. So dike in a sill, magma cutting through rock, intruding through that rock. A dike has a vertical orientation, whereas that sill has a horizontal orientation. This is the last slide on our volcano slides, and it has many of these different structures that we've spoken about. We have batholiths. Remember, that's part of the ancient magma chambers there. It kind of feeds a lot of these other features with that magma. We have a stock, remember? It's kind of like the batholith, but smaller. We have a dike. That's that magma, a thin magma tube that slowly cuts through different rock layers in that vertical orientation. That's our dike. A sill, very similar to the dike, just going in a horizontal orientation. And then we have our lacolith here. Remember, this is when the magma tried to work its way to the surface, but then it found a rock layer that it was unable to cut through began pooling that magma in this little area, creating that kind of bowed dome shape. At the surface, you'd be able to maybe see some of this bowing occur if there was enough magma kind of pumped into that lacolith. So there are some structures on this chart that we didn't speak about, like the mar, um, or even ash flows or things like that. But many of them we've spoken about in class. And the ones that we've spoken about, those are the ones that I want to make sure that you are aware of. So that's all I have to say about different types of intrusive activities, different types of underground volcanic features. If you have any questions about any of them, please go ahead, let me know. Uh, if not, have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video. Our next unit, I believe we're going to talk about earthquakes, but that won't be for a little bit. So again, please go back, watch through the volcano videos if you missed something or if you want a refresher. Uh, and have a great rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye.